Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you right now, God. Asking God our problem, God. It's going to take us, God, to we not know what to do. The songwriter wrote the song, I had some good days and I had some bad days. But my good days outweigh my bad days. I'm not going to complain. Thank you right now, God. Many of your people have sacrificed getting out here today. Someone standing right now that didn't need a prayer. Somebody needs you right now. Someone don't know which way to go, what to do, and what not to do. God, you're a God of all God. You're a God that can do anything but fail. So I need you right now. Touch that young man, brother, minister Benjamin uh, Allen. Oh God, you able to tell him to, to give him the right decision what to do. He don't know what to do, God. The doctor don't know what to do. Somebody say, God, you're a doctor in the hospital. You are a lawyer in the courtroom. God, you know heal right now, God. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. He's not going to make it. It's sad, God. Hallelujah. That our saints, God, have turned away, God. But God, weeping, God, may it do the fight night. Somebody said, joy coming in the morning. Thank you, Jesus. When I look back, See my problem, God. Hallelujah, glory to God. Doctor has given me up. Doctor has given me sad news, God. But God, you are God of good news. God of claiming good news today. Good news for your people on today. No sad news today. Thank you, Jesus. God, I think you for waking me up this morning. Thank you, Jesus. If you call me in right now, God, I thank you for giving me a good relationship with you right now. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, thank you. Hallelujah, thank you. Don't have much money, but God, thank you. But bills are due, but God, thank you. Don't have the tools to wear, but God, thank you. Sick in my body, but God, thank you. Have no food on the table, but God, thank you. Don't have no transportation, but God, thank you. Slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. 
The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. He's going to keep you. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. wherein you are called, with all lowness and meekness, long suffering, obeying one another in love. Endeavor to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. If so be that he have heard him and has been told by him that the truth is in Jesus, that he put on concerning the form of conversation, put off concerning the form of conversation the old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful loss and be renewed in the spirit of your mind and that he put on concern and that you put on the new man after God is created and righteous and true holy. May God bless the hearing and reading of the scripture. Amen. 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 This time you be in the hands of our praise team. Amen.
praise team. You're doing a fine job. And I thank God for you that have braved this rainy weather to come out to fellowship today with us on today. You know, if I don't shout to today, don't don't feel like that we haven't had church. Don't feel like that. I, I, I'm just overjoyed because of what God is already, already doing. You know, I, I witnessed something yesterday and I took it a long time before I actually witnessed. I hear people talk about it, but to see it with my own eyes, it, it really, really, it, it just encouraged me the more. Out of this 57 years, I'll be 58 years old in December. Somebody said that's 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 not old, but I feel like it at times. But God is good. Amen. But on yesterday, uh, you know, I worked nights and, and you know, we used to have prayer early in the morning. It got to the place that I couldn't attend because I get out so late in the morning. But I was able to attend, attend a prayer yesterday that really, really, really blessed my soul. Uh, and we had prayer yesterday. Many of you don't know about it, but they had prayer here from 8 to 10. And God had put it on different ones to do prayer. But yesterday was very, very encouraging to me. And I tell you why, because we hear it on the TV, and many of you all have gone from church to church, searching and looking for something that's already here. Amen. Can I say it again? You know, there's a lady that was there prayer right over here, flew from Florida. Every day, every morning, people drove out there to see her, and people camp out, but it's already here. And I tell you, to God will do great things. You don't have to go nowhere. What I'm saying, you can come right here. But somebody said that in the word that we're supposed to make known his need. But I saw something yesterday, saints of God, it encouraged my heart. I saw Mother Miranda walk out of here yesterday.
will come at this time of welcome committee, birthday announcement, Mother Keith now, anniversaries, Sister Mary Green, home and foreign mission, and announcement. Tired and also be out by our past and our bishop. Selection be our inspiration for us.
somebody brainwash you. Yeah. Man, it's a private thing. Some of y'all wasting your mind on a whole lot of junk. Talking, you don't need to fool with junky folks. Because junky folks got junky mind. Yeah. Now, of course, somebody, if you want to be successful in life, one thing you gotta have is control of your mind. Amen. Amen. You girls crazy about boys. Listen, you got plenty of time to be crazy about boys. Get your mind on your education. Lose the boyfriend, but you can't lose the education. Another thing about the education, you got it on the credit. They might be, they might go to see your check, but they can't take that education back. You don't repossess your education. I always said it's not good to have a grocery bill because people can't repossess groceries. Because hmm, hmm. groceries turn into manure. Hmm, hmm. Hmm, hmm. Philippians chapter 4, talking about your mind, what you're thinking about. That's what I want to talk about today. What are you thinking about? What are you thinking about? What is your focus? When I was growing up in Arkansas, I had a mind to succeed. Listen, I didn't want to try no, try no track for the rest of my life. So I was quitting school. I wanted to work for Mr. Pickett, drive a tractor. I said, what are you making? They told me what they were making. I, I didn't ever think what they were making was going to ever come to what I wanted to make. I wish to God I had been raised in a more successful family where my parents had been talking about me being a lawyer or a doctor. But I, I didn't get that. But in spite of not hearing that there was success in life for a black boy. I always wanted to be an entrepreneur. It's always been in my spirit. I want to run something because if I work for you, that will suit me on what I can make. If I work for me, I can get paid. If I work hard, I can get paid for. I didn't want to go to school and get no education in something that wasn't going to pay down the line. I want to tell you something. When you get an education, you need to be educated in something that's going to pay for the duration. I wanted to be an undertaker at one time because I knew people were going to always die. <laughs> then I got scared of dead folks, so I knew I couldn't run a company like that. <laughs> Philippians chapter 4. I got a few scriptures I want to share. Philippians chapter 4. Verses 8, You got to start with verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Let your moderation be made known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto the Lord. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. Finally, brother, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things uh, are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are of a good report, if that be any virtue, if that be any praise, think on these things. There's not a negative thing to think of. You don't need to think negative because if you think negative, you become negative. If you hang around negative people, you become negative. Girl, if you don't want to get struck on boys, don't run with struck girls. Now, I, I'm going to say this to you first. Now, I don't think. Teenagers ought to be going on those steady days. Amen. You don't have nothing in your head talking about I got to steady the world for me. <coughs> Next thing I'm going to tell you this, uh, brothers and sisters, if you okay ain't nothing now, you might not do nothing later. Uh, my mother 
love would cause me to kind of watch, see what the girls' father was like, the mother was like, what they were doing at home, and tell you something about what they're going to be in life. Now y'all might not like it, and then y'all get a chance to preach y'all preach like it, y'all don't preach. <laughs> Solomon said in Proverbs 23, 7, if you, as you think it in your heart, so are you. That's what we need to do is refocus our young men today. They want to be little pimps. They want to be little dope dealers. They want to have their pants hanging low. One leg up. That best came from the pimp tank. Do you want to be influenced by a convict? I mean, wait a minute now. You know what? Man, hang it low. Meant that you ain't got a big heart full of that. Mm -hmm. One man up, I don't know what it means, but I know it couldn't mean very much. Another thing, I don't know where this society is going with all this slouch. Got a shirt that's long on one. I mean, yes, we don't care. Amen. Yes. Amen. Your appearance does have something to do with it. If you come in my place looking like a clown, I'm not going to hide. Unless I'm looking for a clown. I want to ask you something. Have you ever seen the President of the United States in a jitty book suit? You've never had a jitty book president. You never in the history of this country. And not on the top of the I want to say this, it might make you all mad, but how you look determines whether you're going to get a job or not. You're going to look like a fool unless they want to hire a fool. They're not going to hire you. We, we really need to rethink things. Before y'all pick up a style, find out where the style started at. It's in style. Lily yesterday said, I want to get me something in style. So she pulled a pair of shoes off the rack and gave up the jab and told her, Grandma, that ain't it. <laughs> 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 Ain't nothing wrong with that. I want to tell you another thing. There are certain things that are appropriate for your age. Amen. When you reach a certain age, you're supposed to dress that age. Now, when I was young, I had a, I was cool. I, mean, I, I don't have no, I don't got nothing to put all that in those steps now. I ain't got none of that stuff left. Oh, let's go. All of my hands, I'm trying to get where I'm going. You walk like you, you know, you look like. Look like, hey, that look like a gentleman until they see you in your face. <laughs> I'm going to talk to you just a little bit. Uh, Isaiah said in Isaiah 26 and 3, the Lord will keep us in perfect peace whose mind is sustained or kept on the Lord because we trust in the Lord. You Amen. can't have your mind on a bunch of junk and be successful. Another thing I've had, I've always had a mind to save. In Arkansas, I was the first person in my house to have a bank account. Matter of fact, I left a few cents down there in that bank, from the bank. But I found out, when you leave it so long, it goes somewhere. I don't know where it goes. Hmm. I was going to fool walking in that bank 40 years later and tell them I want my money. But I've had a mind to say, listen, you need to refocus. I'm going to share something with you. Every one of you ought to have it in your mind to save a part of your paycheck. Some of y'all got a mind to shop. First thing you think about when you cash your check is, I'm going to go shop. And when I get through preaching today, you still going to go shop. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm glad I had a mind to save it because now I'm 65 years old. And if I didn't have anything saved, it would be desperation time. I won't tell you all what. I got my first Social Security check. I'm going to tell you how much it was. Tell you how much it is. $843. That's what it is. And I wasn't looking for that. 
Tôi đáng lẽ ra rất nguồn dính đó, mà đang 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 dính mà uh, Medicaid không? Lady Lucas said, you will get a check. I didn't think I was going to get no Social Security. And when she told me how much it was, I could pray to God like they had the Social Security office. <laughs> Well, it's a blessing to get that, but but I couldn't make it on that. It's, it is it is social security. <laughs> social. Now you got to, you know somebody said I don't know if I'm going to get old, but I want to save some money in the event. Prepare for war in the time of peace. My mother would not allow me to be satisfied until she felt I had a trained mind. My daddy thought because I was six feet two and strong, I was educated. He said, This time, pull that boy out of school and let him go to work. My mother said, Not so. Not so. I want my child to go to school. And I want to share something with you. You need, you young people need to get your focus on an education. Amen. That ought to be in your mind, in your soul, in your spirit. That's how, how you ought to wake up. Have it in mind, in your mind, your vocabulary. You ought to want to develop your vocabulary. God has given you a good foundation, but you've got to develop your mind. The never need for people want an executive job and don't have a first grade education. A first grade dropout want to be an executive. That was a time when I was going up in a high school education was outstanding. About 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. Now when you graduate from college, you know, you better go on back to graduate school and get your master's. Now, if you start putting your mind on coding and dating, at 16 years old, and you gotta go through high, uh, high school, you gotta go through college, you come out at 22, then you gotta go to graduate school, come out at 22, four. You got a long time to have your mind on something that ain't really that significant. Man. Oh, a boy, a boy, a boy. <laughs> I also tell you, young men, before you get real serious about a woman, you ought to be have been serious about your education. Amen. Well, listen, listen, listen. You're not going to be any greater than your mind. Somebody, one great poet said, a mind is a terrible thing. A mind is a terrible thing to waste. So Isaiah said, the Lord will keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind on the Lord. I'm going to tell you another thing. What you watch on television is devastating our success. Most of the mess they got on television ain't taking you nowhere. I don't tell you nothing. You better have your mind right when you watch a lot of these religious programs. I heard a lady the other day saying, there ain't no perfect people. She's speaking for herself. There are some people who are walking up right before God. Paul said you ought to have a mind to read perfection. If you haven't reached it, it ought to be a part of your vocabulary. Your mind. Tell me something about Don't waste, I said this earlier, don't waste your mind on junk or junk people. Now, if you go to the trash, I hear a lot of people say they get a lot of good things and get trash in the dump. Mm -hmm. But I guarantee you there's more junk in the dump than good things. And if there's any good thing in the dump, you gotta look real hard for it. But when I go to a junkyard, I don't expect to get nothing to do it. I want to share enough things with you. When you ask people for their advice, you ought to find out how successful they've been and what they've been. I don't ask nobody how to save no money, they ain't got a dime. I know a guy teaching how to, I know a guy that's out teaching people how to build churches and he ain't even got no church. His church has been repossessed. What can he tell me? Huh. You go and ask people how, I want to know how can I keep my husband. They've been mad all the time. <laughs> they can tell you how to get them and lose. 
and show them to the other people. All right. Bear with me, I'll be doing Paul said, evil communication corrupts good man. It's good to know who your children to keep you company with. Amen. It's good to know who your children to keep you company with because if they're running with bad, no man to keep, sassy, talking back, they bring their best on. You need, my parents didn't allow me to run with everything. Oh, no, they didn't allow it. They didn't do it. I think they were a little bit off because they told me to stay with just a sanctified kid. And that was a big mistake because I found out that all of them were right. <laughs> I advise you to have your children be with children that have been trained something. Got some kind of background. This is rough today. It's a rainy day. This is rough today. I'm going to talk a little bit more. Paul said in uh, Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your back body a living sacrifice, holy. And accepted the Lord God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. When you get saved, you've got to bring a new mind to God. Matter of fact, the Bible said, Let this mind be in you, which you also in Christ Jesus. You can't come to church with that boogie boogie mind, that hoochie coochie mind. You got to have a new mind. Some of us need to be reprogrammed. Matter of fact, all of us need to be reprogrammed when we get saved. Uh, we need a new mind and we need the mind of Christ. Uh, uh, the way you were thinking before you got saved won't work as a Christian. Something you just have to work on. Now, I know. And when you know yourself, you know there are things you have to work on. I know I have to work on myself because I don't want to develop a bad mind. Amen. I don't want to develop a high mind. The Bible said you all think more highly than others than you do yourself. You got to reprogram yourself when you come to church because it's no longer me, myself, and I. The other people involved in your life. So Paul in the book of Philippians gives us somewhat of an agenda for our man. You gotta have an agenda for your man. Now, I'll tell you another thing I've learned. When you don't have nothing on your mind, the devil will put something on it. That's why he said, our mind is the devil workshop. When you sitting around doing nothing, it's one of the most dangerous times in your life. Because when you're doing nothing, the devil got something for you to do. So Paul said, finally, my brother, what sort of things are true? Some of us like to hear lies. We don't like the truth. That's why I was, I was sure it was so, it's so popular. Because he's full of mess. You don't know what I'm saying? He coming back. He coming back because folk love junk. Matter of fact, we're talking about he coming back more pronounced than he was when he left. Love junky shows. Talking about people saying bad things. You know what they said? They said that the uh, pornography industry is a billion dollar industry. Billion, multi billion dollar industry. They, they also say you have to be careful. When you put your money in the stock market, you're investing in this thing. Well, I don't know that. Right? As long as I don't know where my money's coming from, I guess it's going to be in the Truth. Truth. We should put our mind on truth. Before you, when you hear a rumor on somebody, before you spread it, please make sure it's true. <coughs> now, that's 
to be real truth about it. If somebody called you just like this morning, Elder Lord was talking about this young lady, Mother uh, Randall got healed. But if you said Mother Randall was called a man in the house, oh my God. Some of us had to walk out of here and get on the phone. <laughs> I can't wait until you say this. Before. I can tell this. But Paul said, what sort of things are true? What sort of things are honest? What sort of things are just? What sort of things are pure? What sort of things are a good report? What sort of things that be any virtue, that be any praise, think all these things. Put, get the control of your mind. That's why I didn't lose your mind on a bunch of junk. If you want to be successful in life, I, I, I want to share this with you. If you want to live safe, you got to start thinking about salvation. Amen. <laughs> I can do it. I can be saved. Too many of us trying to find ways to get around, get around being saved. Like this lady was saying, the Bible said, Mark Perfect, man. I listen to him because my wife won't listen to that. Don't listen to many of these people talk. Because they're messing around and messing around good thinking of it. Said the Bible said, uh, Mark the perfect man, it ain't nothing. She said, it Ain't nothing. Well, how would God say it? How many of y'all believe you can live safe? Amen. You got to start believing that. You got to believe that. You got to put it down in your spirit. I can do all things through Christ that live in me. Some of y'all don't believe you can be successful. But I got this in my mind. I was going to die like that. I people to tell me, say, he's rich. And I told somebody to see if he does it. I said, Bishop is rich. I said, pleasure will be left to you. That's what I'm talking about. But if you, if, you, if you read my mind, you must be talking about my mind. Hmm. Because my mind is, I want to be successful. I want to be an obtainer. I want to succeed in life. It's in my spirit. When I die, I'm going to die with a succeeding mind. And I believe that I can live true to God. I believe I can live the same. I don't believe just because I'm in the sinful world, I got to be sinful. Amen. I don't have no mind like that. When I leave home, I leave home intending to return home and say amen. That's my mind. I do, I should be. You got to, that's right, that's a want to be thing. You got to want to be careful. You got to want to be saved. You got to want to be delivered. You, if you got something in life that you want, you got to go after it. Now, Abraham Lincoln uh, got his education by the fireplace. He didn't know he would help be president. He said this three words. I will prepare myself and maybe someday my chance will come. The man prepared himself for something that didn't seem intelligible. Yes, I used to pick cotton. While I was picking cotton, I was looking down at the end of that rope. One of these days, it's going to be the end of this. <laughs> I never saw myself go to the cotton picker. <laughs> I saw myself one day I'm on the phone and having some cocktails. I intended to be the man to pay them rather than to be a recipient of Didn't see no chance. I didn't know. They, even when we got started in the ministry, we started with a little insignificant place at 4510 Prospect where they laughed at me. And even at 4510 Prospect, I named the church Trinity Temple because I was looking down the road. My mind was that I was going to pass a temple. And I came when we moved out here, I didn't have a building for Deacon Madden, my good friend. 
came out here looking for this. He shook his head. He came on out, got a shield, and thought got a saw, and thought cut it down, and kept me to get his name, but he didn't, didn't quite believe it. <laughs> Mary Lou told me, he said, honey, he said, this is a nice church of 1735. This is nice enough, baby. We don't need to move away. <laughs> this is nice enough. Thank you, Jesus. This is it, baby. We can shout all we want to shout. It was my mind, Lord, that we can do better. I didn't let nobody deter me when they talk. And I didn't hang around with no negative people. My cousin from California said, all right, it's going to be rough on you to build this church. We can get that building called me. I ain't called it that years ago. I ain't called him yet. But I want somebody to come tell me how bad something's going to be. I want somebody to tell me I can do it. Right. And you can let people talk to you about good things long enough. It can get in your mind. It can get in your spirit. And you can't stop because your mind is made up and that spirit is fine. Doesn't matter how good you get. Your mind is made up. When your mind is made up, you may, may have made an effort in school, but your mind is made up to make an A. And, and you don't put my leg on the way up and make it no A. Your mind. Now, when I got married, people said that I wasn't going to be my good husband. They said that I was going to beat my wife. I wasn't going to be successful. But they didn't know in my heart, I had my mind made up that I was going to be a good husband. You know how to be one. But my mind was made up. And so, as a result, 43 years later, I'm not all I should be, but, but this guy loves me and I love her. Right. Yeah, my mind made up that he was going to succeed in life. My mind was made up I wasn't going to get no divorce. I never went into no marriage looking for to get out of it. Oh. I didn't know 43 years was going to come, but my mind was made up that if I'm living here, we 43. And my mind is made up that if it's 60, I'll be here. I can share something with when I came to Kansas City. Uh, I had $25. I told you all this over and over. $25 didn't have no real estate, no job. But I came to Kansas City looking for a job. I got some insignificant jobs. I had a job at a, a grain drop. Man, I inhaled all that dust. I inhaled it one day. I ain't going back to that no more, but I still didn't stay home. Didn't have no car. And my mind was made to get a job. I walked from Kansas City. I walked from home here. I walked from 27 in Cleveland to 27 in Oakland. You go out there and drive, baby. You know, and I would walk into work and walk to work and work after I got there. But I didn't walk long because my mind was made up, I was going to buy me a car. So in order to have a car, I had to save the money. I'm just talking about when you get your mind made up. Another thing is my mind has always been to pay my bills. I receive my bills today and tomorrow I pay my bills. I got a big, big bill for they were expressed big. And they told me, they said, all you have to do is just pay a certain amount a month. They told me, pay a certain amount. No, I don't like bills. So you want to get rid of a bill? You pay it. You don't, you don't have no money to go shopping on until you pay your bill. And you just have it in your mind. Sometimes I need to pay a shoe. And my water bill came first. Like me. Huh? Yeah, that, that, that's the first thing. I need, I need my life more than I need to pass you. I need my water. This morning I want to thank God. Sometimes it's just good to thank God you got water, but I thank God I had hot water. And I kept on running that shower until it got hot. I just thank God for the versatility. Water is good, but I wasn't going to take no cold shower. I just want to thank God I had hot water. And I don't have hot water, you got to pay your dead bill. Mind of gay, stop me from dead. Well, I'm just talking about your mind. Every one of us, the way we are, talking about a mind. If you want to be successful, you got to get a mind to succeed. It's been a real cold day for me today, Lord. <laughs> I want to tell you, I always 
like shoes. Always did like shoes. Always like shoes. When I was in Arkansas, I liked nice shoes. Good man. I'm going to store a bar for the too. But I'm going to tell you this. I always had my mind made up. I'm going to get some money. I'm going to go over some extra. I'm going to buy me some good shoes. I got some now. I used to have two pairs. One, maybe two. One was bad. I used to wear some shoes that were so bad. Oh, yeah. that they, when it rained on them, they fought with them for your people. And that's what they did. <laughs> I I they, they got just like you feel. But I wasn't gonna wear them unless somebody helped me. That was my man was made up. I'm not gonna wear shoes that fall to my foot the rest of my life. <laughs> Let me share something with you. I live in houses that you can look through the cracks and tell them they like it. Shoot the dust through the floor. But my man was made up. I won't live like that the rest of my life. Huh? You have to have a mind, your mind, your mind. Get a mindset and don't change your mind because other people's minds are not like your mind. I want to work on that mind. I'll tell you another thing. I used to be a wine old. You used to be a wine old, but one day I got drunk and I was falling all around and I said, I don't believe God made me to be no fool like this. So I came to Jesus. Well, I heard Jesus could change your mind. Yeah. This is what I was doing that I did for years. I started out being a wine from 12 years old. I got drunk the first time when I was 12 years old. By the time I was 20 years old, I was a wine head. Young wine head. Messed all up. Mary, you have to take me home. We, we be out partying. Mm -hmm. I know, my folks didn't know what folks come home. So she took me over to one of those low cheap overnight places. Mm -hmm. Leave me over there. She take my money. <laughs> <laughs> take my money and leave me over there. They come back. I guess she gave me, I know she gave me part of it back. <laughs> like she said she had a dog. But she come back the next morning and check on me. But I said, this is not the life of an intelligent man. A man that's going somewhere in life that's going to be a leader in life. I said, I'm not going to do it. I said, I'm stopping this. So I got a little one Sunday morning and I went to church and I told this brother, I want to get saved. I'm tired of the life I'm living. That Friday night, that Saturday night, I had to come home and had run through all of the red lights. But I can find it. I was a devil. Trying to kill me. I got rid of that one and I said, I want to see another Saturday. I'm not trying to do no more we got to the church. And I want to tell you another thing. Even when you come to church, you don't always get loose from the devil. It takes some time to get loose. Amen. But I had my mind made up that I am going to change. I'm going to give Christ a change, chance to change my mind. Now, if you want to get saved, you got to have your mind made up that I'm going to be saved. I had my mind made up. I didn't want to be no hypocrite. I'm going to be in the church playing around. I'm going to be saved. Right. And so it's a mind thing. And you know what? I'll tell you this. You don't have to have to be backed up by a whole lot of folks. I ain't never had nobody back me up. So we always sit around and wait on me to flop. So I think I'm going to flop now. I'm going to flip flop. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> I ain't gonna flop, I'm gonna see a flop. I believe that you give your life to God, put your man on the Lord. You be all right, yellow, yellow, uh, bold. What you said about that job, if that job goes out, and it's only going out because God got a better one for you. Amen. And, and you know what you should have told that man? This is the one I heard the first time. When I came over here, I was looking for a job. <laughs> It might not be the place where I'm going to retire. I know one thing, if this job plays out, I'm going to have another job because the Bible says if a man doesn't work. So I know I got to eat, so God's going to provide me a job. Don't let nobody trap you. Yeah, I don't believe
the statistics. They said the statistics that most everybody's going to have all now. Mm -hmm. Oh, they said they talk about the majority of us going to have all now. But I believe in God's will that the Lord will keep me in perfect peace. And my mind is on Him. So if my mind is on the Lord, I can't lose. Said that most of us black men, one out of every ten of us, gonna have prostate cancer. But I believe that God allowed me to have prostate cancer. Amen. That's my mindset. <clears throat> I still believe God is a healer. How many of y'all believe God is a healer? Yes. Do y'all believe He's a healer? Amen. If you believe He'll heal you, He will heal you. Yes. That's what faith is believing. came to his world and died on the cross and he said it is finished. I believe because Jesus Christ has lived and walked this life. If I have a mind to be like Christ, I can have what Christ said I can have. I believe you can be saved as a young person. Yes. I don't think you have to be about 50 years old before you can be saved. And young people, you put it in your mind. Don't put it in your mind to follow your parents. If your parents didn't do things right, don't follow them. My daddy didn't say nothing. He didn't say nothing. He's not the old people. My mother paid him out of debt when he got sick. As soon as he got well, he went back in the bed. So, I made up my mind. I'm going to take the off the road my dad. My daddy worked hard. That was good. But he wouldn't do what was right with his money. He just bought things and saw things he wanted. Didn't make a whole lot. But if he had made some sacrifices, he could have done that. When he died, if my dad had done right, our house would have been paid for. Him. He dropped the insurance. He had kept the insurance. If he had died, our house would have been paid for. Him. Tell me, my dad wasn't thinking he knew he was getting older. He was thinking about what's going to happen to this city. But always in my mind to succeed. Do I have anybody here got in mind to succeed? Amen. And you don't get too old. You don't get too old. The Kentucky Colonel was an old man before he made it. That's why you see an old man with gray hair, gray beard. But he made it. He's still on the building. And you know what? You see his picture on the middle. And another thing about those man, he took his mind to the grave with him. They don't, they don't fry the chicken like that. That way that man prepared that chicken, they don't do it no more. It's a bad thing to bury your mind with him. All right, I'm through. Talk about that mind. Want your wine old? Think about when daylight break, I'm getting me some wine. Hmm. Hmm. I I want to find twenty four seven. Then I changed my mind. Let Christ have my mind, and I gave it up. I've never been to a rehabilitation program. Never. Never. I've never been counseled. Mary and I have never been counseled. We should have been. We never been counseled. We always talk to each other. We talk. Don't shit with me. Don't ever stop talking to your mate. Listen, man, it's not a one-way conversation. Your wife has something to say. Amen. Sometimes you ought to listen. Everybody stand to your feet. Let's put it, let's put it like the Bible said. The Bible said, help me, right? Help me. Help me. Help me. That wife help you to meet in the condition you need. Man. I wouldn't marry no woman. My professor in school told me to never marry a woman that can throw her out the back door and you can bring her in front. Mm. Don't ever marry a woman like that. Don't marry a woman that knows how to serve. Manage what you have. You married me for the last 43 years, it's been real good. Been real good. I don't, I don't know the last time I bought any toilet paper or so, I didn't look around, I just 
That's a, that's a small one. Go ahead out there. Got me some soap. I like the small one. When they get small, it's time to throw them away. I like the big bar of soap. I like the little, I don't, don't save the little one. I don't like the bar of soap you have in the, in the hotel. They're little. I want to know today if there's some, if you have been living your mind to somebody else, if you've been letting the devil wear you out with control of your mind, I want to want you to know the devil talks to your mind as well as God. If you're tired of the devil manipulating you and using you, I want you to come down here today and let me pray for you. I want to be saved. Be a part of this church. I want you to come. All right. Father, today, I've done my best. Something on our minds. I pray that I hope and trust that I have said something to give us to regain. Focus. Regather our thoughts. Save us, Lord. Deliver us, set us free, make us whole. I pray for those that have become discouraged. Pray for those that have become disillusioned. Pray for those that stayed at home today and didn't have a good reason to do it. Now they're saying, I wish I had come. The weather's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Father, we do love you today. We praise you and we glorify you. Sanctify us today and make us worthy to receive communion today. He said, as often as we eat this bread and drink of this cup, we do show for food that until you come. We're getting ready now to eat that bread that is symbolic of your body and drink the fruit of the vine that is symbolic of your blood. Sanctifies. Sanctifies. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You may be seated. Now listen, we're going to have communion. Yes. I want to thank Sister B. Donovan. The same night in which the Lord was betrayed, he took bread and after he had taken it, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, said, Take eat, this is my body which was broken for you. And likewise, he took the cup, and all of them drank from that big mug. Paul said, we should examine ourselves. You can't examine me. You can only examine yourself. He said, examine yourself, for if you eat and drink, the Lord suffer unworthily. That means eat and drink it, knowing that you are a practicing sinner. You eat and drink damnation to your soul, for this call of many are weak sickly and some ultimately do die. What we do is we come and receive our receptacle and after we receive our receptacle we return to our seats. We all come in together. Don't throw your receptacle on the floor. If you do it at home, just don't do it today. We have a receptacle. Don't leave it in your seat. Don't do any of those things. Come on, brother. These are the ministers of our church. Oh, who's supposed to do this? I'm silent. Thank you, Sister Bob, Sister Marsha. Thank you. 